Okay, so here again we could we should be able to set up our domain. Okay, and again we could use our domain to test for extraneous solutions, but again we're just gonna make sure that we know how to do our domain first. The inside restriction is x has to be bigger than negative two. Greater than sorry, greater than or equal to negative two. And the outside domain, because the square root has to equal positive for this to be positive or zero, it's going to be x is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, so these two together become x is greater than or equal to 5 when we put those two restrictions together. Okay, so that would help if we want, we can use that to test our, our extraneous solutions. Okay, here we can, or we can substitute it in. Okay, so here I'm going to undo the square root with a square. x plus 2 equals x squared. And make sure you FOIL that out. 10x. Oops, 25, negative 5 times negative 5 is going to be positive 25. Okay, it's a quadratic, make that equal to zero. Subtract x from both sides. Subtract two from both sides. Okay, so 23 is, uh, is a prime number. So it looks like that there's, no, there's not much choice here to factor. So it looks like it's not gonna solve by factoring. So I'm gonna solve this by quadratic formula. So I end up with 11 plus minus 11 squared minus 4 times a times c. And that's all over 2 times a. Okay, so this ends up being, uh, what's that going to be? That's going to be 121 minus 92. Okay, so we end up with 11 plus minus Square root of 121 minus 92 gives me 29 all over 2. Okay, so then we can test, we can check this against our domain. We can, this one's going to be a little bit hard to plug in. Okay, we can estimate the value of this decimal and then we could plug in and do a, a calculation of this. Okay, but this one might be easier to test it against our domain. Okay, so we're going to go 11 plus square root 29 divided by 2. Okay, so we get 8.19. Okay, and then minus, we get 2.81. Okay, so it looks like that 2.81 is going to be our extraneous solution now. Again, we could just, if we understand how to use this domain restriction, and we're confident with that, we can say that the 2.81 is our extraneous solution. We can still test it. Okay, this, now, when we test this, we're going to have to use kind of decimal values. So when I work this out, this is going to be 10.19 is equal to 8.19 minus 5. That's going to be about 3.19. And the square root of 10.19 is approximately equal to is equal to 3.19. Okay, so we get three. Oh, this is going to be x equals 8.19. Maybe I'll just draw this a little bit more clearly. So we're testing x equals 8.19. So we end up with 10.19 is equal to 3.19 that's approximately true okay so we'll put a check underneath that one that one is a good solution when we test 2.81 okay we're going to end up with square root of 4.81 is equal to negative 2.19 well this is clearly not true this is not equal that must be an extraneous solution Okay, and again, when we check it against our domain restriction, it 
it is consistent with how we would have what our analysis would have been with the domain restriction.